Hi guys, my name is Elsie. My name is JT. And welcome to the 2016 Spanish Grand Prix preview. Now Spain is round 5 of the 2016 Formula 1 season, kicking off the European season at the Cerro de Catalunya Barcelona in Spain. This is the 25th running of the Spanish Grand Prix. It started in 1991 and has ran consecutively each year from that. 4.6 kilometre circuit with 66 laps to be run on Sunday with two DRS zones and the fastest time sat in 2015 by Nico Hulkenberg of Force India at 343.8 km an hour. So that's all the stats out of the way, JT. Uh, now let's head into the talking about the race. Now the first person I want to discuss is the man who we haven't, he wasn't discussed that much at the weekend because no one really saw him, he, was just, he ran off into the distance. But he's definitely going to be discussed, he was definitely discussed after the race and heading into this weekend because he is chasing eight consecutive wins. He's beaten Michael Schumacher's record JT, or he's matched it, and he'll most definitely go ahead of him between Michael and Sebastian this race. Now he'll be on, you know, there's no words to say, we're not going to say he's on a high. We said that last week. He, it's, it's unbelievable the what he'll be thinking, but he's chasing number eight JT. How do you think he'll be feeling? Very, very excited, I would think, but I think also in a way he will be quite calm coming in, uh, into this weekend because I think he'll be taking a one race at a time. Um, in his mind, because he doesn't want to like, exactly like jump, he doesn't want to be like uh, two or three races ahead, thinking about oh, you know, I could potentially beat this record. I think he'll be taking one um, race at a time. But at the same time, I think uh, deep down in Rosberg, he'll definitely be very, very like, oh, I'm, I'm very close to you know nine in a row, matching Sebastian Vettel. So yeah, if he does win this weekend, that's eight in a row. He's just one one shy of time with Sebastian Vettel, with, which is nine in a row. And if you go up and he wins this race next year and the race after that, I think in Canada we could see him obviously beat the record of ten consecutive wins, beat the the, the legendary Sebastian Vettel, yep. Vettel German as well. If he gets that far, Canada with a win, he will get 175 points in the in the uh, championship, which is I mean that that's almost uncatchable, and that's before the halfway point of the season. Exactly. So it's it must be so exciting to be uh, Nico or in the Rosberg family at the moment. Um, he's doing so well. He's at 100 points at the moment. Uh, he ran off in the distance with his teammate. No wins, which is very strange to see. Even when he was at McLaren, this was if he'd gone this, if he'd gone five races or four races heading into the fifth race without a win or without anything anything promising after what he's done. You know, three con- uh, three world championships, two consecutive. As he's a current the reigning world champion, it must be very strange for Lewis. So, how do you think he's feeling, and also what the team think of him? I think he'll be very, very nervous, as he has been pretty well for the last three to four races, because you've seen uh, Nico Rosberg running away with this title, um, and it's just getting further and further away from Lewis uh, each race as it comes. And he needs to do something about it quick, because if you remember in the, in the last race, he was you know, saying, right, I'm calm, I'm ready for this weekend, my season starts now. And obviously, I mean, yeah, fair enough, he finished second, but that's really not the point, because uh, Rosberg still got that got them extra seven points. Uh, Lewis needs to start winning so that he can gain probably perhaps even seven points every race depending on when Nico uh, finishes but um, I think pressure will certainly be getting to happen and he needs to start looking over his shoulder quickly because obviously Red Bull are coming uh, up thick and fast and obviously Ferrari are struggling a little bit but they can just easily turn on the pace whenever yeah. and obviously coming into the likes of Spanish Grand Prix where we see the first um, upgrades being um, uh, installed on the cars so obviously um, it, it's a massive game of catch up now cat and mouse and obviously Ferrari um, are quite good at you know just putting some great upgrades on the car. They've got the facilities, they've got the finances, and obviously they'll be no stranger to putting some you know new aerodynamics, new turbos, whatever on the car, and, and definitely probably potentially try and catch uh, the likes of Lewis yeah. Hamilton. Uh, whether Nick Rosberg will be caught or not, I really don't know. But Lewis Hamilton definitely needs to be aware of these yeah. Ferraris, not only this weekend but f- for the good probably next few races till the halfway point. Yeah, I would say. very much so. And he's not doing bad as a driver. He's just doing bad for the reigning world championship. If he's if he's serious about going for obviously a third consecutive and uh, four in a row, uh, sorry four in a row, three in a row, and obviously it's fourth world championship, he'll definitely have to get serious in terms of what he's doing. Now we've said in preview and review shows, JT, through the year, see Australia, we were like Lewis is in it to win it. Uh, Bahrain, you know, Lewis is we'll have to watch his back. You know, four wins by Nico at the moment. China, it was you're really slipping behind, mate. Come on, Russia is you're running out of time. Now is it is is he Addis? Is he Addis? It, it is make or break this weekend. I think if Rosberg wins the race and Hamilton was to get a DNF or a bad result, then yeah. it, it, I would, it is game over. Mm. Um, I mean, it, it, it is too early to call, as we have said. But you know, I mean, 
think let's be realistic about this. I think obviously Rosberg can now afford to, to do badly in one or two races and to, a retirement here and there. And obviously that that means Lewis Hamilton has to be at, at least in the top two. Yeah. If, if Rosberg starts falling off the pace, and whether his car is able to do that, I'm not too sure. And as I said before, um, Mercedes, Mercedes have been like known to uh, have hiccups at the mid part of the season. Yeah. Um, they have done in the past couple of years, obviously when Daniel Ricciardo started winning, and obviously Sebastian Vettel started to pick up a little bit of form at the end of well, halfway through last season, towards uh, coming up the, the end of the European season. Yeah. So they have had some like you know gremlins in the car at some point. Uh, whether that will happen or not, I don't know. And, ob- and, ob- and obviously um, upgrades, but well, uh, they're vital as well. And obviously Mercedes will definitely be upgrading as well. I believe Ferrari are using some more tokens uh, this weekend uh, yeah. to, to boost more power uh, to catch the Mercedes. Uh, whether Mercedes not or not. Uh, I'm not really too sure if they are, but um, so yeah, Ferrari will definitely use them tokens wisely. Yeah. Uh, so we felt at a really good time as well because um, they'll probably, as I said before, looking at them too, going right. Rosberg is probably a little bit unrealistic to catch, but Hamilton's under pressure now. He's you know even the Red Bulls are starting to get out of as well. So I believe that Ferrari, Ferrari's next target will definitely be Hamilton. Obviously, using the extra power to build the gain on. Yeah. Yeah, um, it, um, uh, Nico won the race uh, this time last year, the Spanish yes. Grand Prix. Um, but obviously, it, it was tables had turned. Lewis was more of the dominating form even by this time last season. But let's move off the Mercedes and let's go on to what you mentioned, JT, about the Ferraris. Now, the yes. first thing with Ferrari, which again something that I never thought I'd, I'd really uh, you know think about with them, is obviously is it's like retirement and reliability. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen had a retirement in Australia. Then we saw Seb with a DNS with an engine fight on the. Uh, parade lap in Bahrain uh, and then also obviously Sebastian's collision with um, uh, Daniel Fiat of Toro Rosso um, yeah. that, that's new to say we haven't got we haven't got we haven't got a winter break to, to, to learn new teams it's, it's straight in obviously with, with Toro Rosso as Daniel Fiat obviously when he was running Red, Red Bull so we've had two retirements from Sebastian um, and obviously three like major reliable well so two major reliability problems, obviously Australia and China, and then two retirements for Seb. Now, obviously, I know he's going for the title. He is definitely, well, we all backed him as the only driver who could really stop the Mercedes power, but is this a real concern that Ferrari should be worried about, you know, in terms of reliability and what's happened in the year? Because they've never really had real reliability problems in the past, have they? Well, they haven't. I mean, obviously, 2014 was a bit of a, a very cool year by their standards. But then it ended up coming in 2015, they won three races, which were obviously... Like a bit like Red Bull in 2014, the only car that could crash the Mercedes. So, Red, um, sorry, Ferrari will, will be heading into this season very optimistic, very you know positive. That right, they did well last season, and I believe that we've got a faster car this season, which they showed in testing mine. Uh, let's not forget they did have a very good car in testing battle top some times here and there. Uh, right, they did well as well. Our reliability was good as well, um, which was quite surprising uh, on, on all other cars because the past two tests have been you know very poor, but. Um, and obviously, a team like Ferrari are a, very, a great team in Formula One. I mean, having this problem now, um, it's you know it's getting it's going to get the better of them. And um, obviously, they don't want to repeat what happened in 2014 when everything just went wrong. Yeah. Um, I think I think expectations might be a little bit too high on Ferrari this season because of what they achieved last season. Yeah. And um, obviously, with Rosberg running, running away with this with this uh, championship right now, it is a very a, much of a struggle not only for Ferrari but the likes of Vettel and Raikkonen who have the ability to. Yeah. championships and uh, starting to fall behind uh, Rosberg and, and maybe the pressure is getting them um, Ferrari as well I mean right now got on the podium last race which yeah. is fantastic to see because yeah. it's not very often we see him um, and obviously coming into the Spanish Grand Prix beforehand before Settle won in Malaysia this was Ferrari's last win in Formula 1 in 2013 which was a massive massive margin but obviously we will going here Fernando Alonso won that race um, and obviously the, the, about a year later a year and a half later the, the final win again was Sebastian Vettel so um, and obviously they don't, want to, they don't want to repeat that fate and say if you were to win this weekend then have like another massive long gap yeah. wait or like but like what they do and I think the last win was Singapore 2015 so yeah. it has been, already been a long way already considering the, you know, the pace of their car yeah, yeah. and um, you know they definitely need to put up their ideas but you know, rather now now rather than later so then obviously we'll see what, the, what they apply this weekend I believe they're going for a new front wing and as, as like I said before yeah. um, engine tones as well to boost their power but yeah. I think um We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes this weekend for Ferrari. Yeah. We'll judge probably the next couple of races in, in the week, uh, into the European season, uh, coming to Canada, and obviously the likes of the, the, the new European Grand Prix, then obviously yeah. the British Grand Prix. Yeah. And we'll probably judge them probably around that stage. Yeah, yeah, that'd be, 
And Ferrari definitely made a problem. I mean, they've done they had a, they've had a good start this season. Look, as wrong, you know, three out of four podiums. Obviously, a podium for Kimi in, in Bahrain, uh, yeah. a podium for Sebastian in, in China after his collision with uh, Tor Russell, Danny Fiat. He makes an appearance again when he was with Red Bull. I mean, um, and then obviously Kimi's podium in Russia as well, second podium of the year. Uh, so they're definitely making a progression. Let's see how they do in Spain. Obviously, I'm I'm, I'm supporting Ferrari in this video, as you can see. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously, Ferrari definitely they they will be they should be a big challenger to Mercedes at the moment, or even yeah. Nico as well. It's maybe Lewis is you know on on, on their goals of what to chase down, but Nico definitely. So let's move on to the third team, J2, which I know you want to talk about is Red Bull. Now, obviously. We've got a man, 18 years old, who is in his new overalls for the first time in his life. It's Max Verstappen at Red Bull. Let's start with him uh, out with the two drivers. How can what can he do in this race? His first race, he needs to impress, doesn't he? Definitely, I, I have every bit of faith in him. You know what I mean? But um, he, he does need to you know, be, be focused. You know, don't be like all like immature about it. You know, or I'm at a big team. You know, they chose me over my teammates. Yeah. Like that. He needs to keep his uh, this week firmly on the ground um, for the rest of the season I, I would say let's be professional about this mm. and obviously I mean having a dad like Josh Verstappen who, have, who like I said before is an old school racer so he'll be teaching Max yeah. you know right this is how you drive this is how you respect other drivers as well yeah. and be professional because you can obviously see in his interviews I mean I've seen a couple of people in, in interviews when they did like mid-season testing at Silverson or pre-season testing at Barcelona you know, the young ones who are in GP2 yeah. testing drivers and stuff like that doing interviews if you compare them to like some Matthew Verstappen, who's young, 18, 17, 18 years old, um, he's very professional. He's very, you know, you know as if you would think he's been doing this since like, like for years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man, he's only like only eight years old. Um, and I'm, I'll be good for good for him this, this weekend. And obviously, as we said before in, um, in the F1 debate episode 11 uh, yesterday, we um, said that maybe the pressure might get low. Obviously. We'll Obviously, he'll try not to um, get, uh, uh, let that get to him because obviously yeah. filling in for a driver who pretty much shouldn't, shouldn't be really replaced, mm. in my opinion. Yeah. Very, very, very controversial decisions. So, yeah. And obviously, everyone's expecting a lot from him as yeah. well, so that'll be added as well. And driving for a team like Red Bull. Yeah. So he's got a lot of expectations riding on his shoulders. And I will see how professional he can be this weekend if he can prove pretty strong. Mm. And just prove anybody right. Now. Yes, I, I might be only 18 years old, but I am a professional driver. Yeah. Who can win championships win races and do yeah. uh, well for the sport yeah just as JT mentioned there um, please catch F1 Debate episode 11 where we yeah. discuss all this it's on the screen at the moment it should be um, uh, yeah, obviously not, we, go in, LC, we, go we go into so much detail about that it's, a, it's an hour long episode uh, we've had many views at the moment many likes um, so people are definitely just keep, keep it up we have a lot of uh, what we talk about that so Max, discussed him in Red Bull. Let's talk about his counterpart, or the guy that he's replaced, JT. Uh, Daniel Kvyat, his, uh, <laughs> it is the first race for Toro Rosso this season. It's almost strange because uh, I saw a photo today on Facebook and it was like, do people think it's 2014? Does he think it's 2014? Oh, no way, it's 2016 because he's back in the Toro Rosso. So, his, head, so his, face will, I mean, he'll, his face will be like, his face look like sin. He will be feeling like terrible. JT. He's back in a his sister team and a lower team. I, if I was Daniel Fiat, I would I would raise hell. But uh, obviously, he can't. He's got to be professional because he's on telly. But how will he be feeling? How will he be feeling? And then, how do you think that will hinder his performance? Well, th- from what we've heard, he'll be disappointed because obviously being demoted after doing uh, two, well, not two bad races, but two you know wrong decisions let's yeah. say, on the track, causing collisions and stuff. Which um, obviously safety in Formula One is a massive thing, and if he keeps on doing that, then obviously no wonder that have said right, you're going to have to be demoted. But after, I mean, one little incident in in China, then goes and does it in Russia when he didn't really cause any serious injuries um, and, and stuff like that. And I mean, um, I believe, in a way, it'd be kicking himself because it's like you know that's my chance, that could be my chance gone. Yeah. Coming into this weekend and obviously going back to uh, Tor Rosso. I mean, I seen a picture on his, on his Instagram, on the official Toro Rosso Instagram, and um, it's a picture of him and Frank's toss and they're both like, you know, happy. Oh yeah, uh, smiley yeah. Smiley faces, and I'm going deep down. You are absolutely devastated, Danny. And I, I, I feel like just looking at that picture, you're like, oh, what's happened? Yeah, yeah. What, what is going on? So, I mean, pressure will be on him, on him as well because it'd be like if he doesn't deliver at Toro Rosso for the rest of this season, and then the, 
the head boss might go, right, I'm sorry Danny, but I don't want you in anymore. Yeah, we we'll have yeah. to get someone else in. So, and obviously, with them being promoted to Red Bull after the 2014 season, yeah. that means they're expecting some like, good results from him. Yeah. Because obviously being promoted like, being, being promoted like that, they obviously see, obviously see some promise in him. And um, obviously, you have to try and keep playing from um, <laughs> the likes of, 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 of the Red Bulls. Yeah, yeah. Because obviously, I mean, we've said that before, where anything could happen if it were to collide with the likes of Herr Ricardo or, or the Sabin, that would be very, very Or Sebastian. Very I, reckon he hasn't, I reckon he hasn't thought about him. He probably smashed it in the middle again. If he does, I'll probably just say, right, Danny. Sorry, You're right. <laughs> I, I, I would go now and get someone else in. <laughs> this one is both. Even though, I mean, even though, and obviously remember, we, we do talk about this in yesterday's episode, so please catch it. Yes. We talked about them, I mean, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I said Pasta, uh, Roman, they always used to collide with someone at the start, or yeah. almost always. Obviously, with obviously everyone knows Roman's uh, crash that he caused in Spa 2012 when he, he, he took out Alonso Hamilton. Uh, and was a well, Perez was later retired, but he was in the crash as well. Um, and yeah, obviously, everyone remembers that, and that was strange. But sorry, I, I keep obviously, it's a massive topic, I always want to keep talking about yeah, it. It is a really, really big topic that we do want to see. It is, but um, yeah, this is the Spanish copy preview. And obviously, if you do want to see like uh, episode 11 where we talk about it, discuss it more, yeah. let us know your opinion as well, all about the situation, what you think is going on, yeah, and check it out. Uh, it, was on, it was on yesterday, uh, it's a really, it's a really good hit, it's probably one of, it's one of our most popular videos we've yeah. ever had. Go and, go and check it out. I mean, yes, it is about an hour long, but trust me, it is a, it is worth a watch. It is it? great. Um, but we can't talk about the Spanish Grand Prix without talking about one man in particular, Paul Gold here of Fernando Alonso yes. in the McLaren. Uh, last race, they did quite well. Uh, well, they did very well, let, let's say, 6th six, six and 10th. Fernando Alonso finished in 6th, Jensen Button finished in 10th. Coming into the Spanish Grand Prix, Fernando Alonso in front of his home, home crowd. He'll be, he'll be ready for it. He's won this race twice. Obviously, he's not going to win it this season unless yeah. everybody crashes out, which would be very, very odd to see. Daniel might but take them all out. It's caused by Daniel. <laughs> there we go. Right. Everyone's crashed out. Fernando Alonso wins the race. McLaren finally won the race in like, like forever. Um, I mean, this obviously, the McLaren have got a faster car than what they had last season and the season before, let's say. Um, so the car, and, 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 and it is reliable. Let's say, I mean, take the car to put out a couple of races ago, but obviously they have scored more points than they have already by this time last season. So, Flano Alonso, very, very optimistic, very, very um, in a positive mood from the last yeah. race. He's coming this weekend. Home crowd, he's, you know, it's, it's all about Flano Alonso. Do you think that he can deliver this weekend and um, get McLaren some good, some, a good haul yeah. of points um, for him and his team uh, in, front, in front of his home crowd? Um, how, how do you think he'll do this weekend? I really hope um, he, he performs. He does an amazing performance. I mean, I know that Fernando, as a driver, obviously, he's still got loads there. He's still got loads to give to the sport. So, as a driver, he'll be he's unbelievable. You know, he'll make the, he'll make you know the best times he can. He will deliver everything that he has. He'll put everything you know, hundred percent, hundred ten percent on the line. But obviously, it's depending on how fast the car is. Now, McLaren will get upgrades like many of the team. I'm not sure what they're getting. I'm not sure how many torters they're using on the engine and things like that. But obviously. You know, they're definitely growing, as, as you said, JT, you know, the stronger from last season. I do hope that. Obviously, I hope that he gets into Q3 uh, in, 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 in uh, qualifying on the Saturday. And, yeah, I hope he does a great um, result. Now, in terms of in terms of how they'll move up on the grid, and obviously, we'll go into the tyres. We'll mention that uh, a bit a little later in the show. But, obviously, that's, you know, pit stops and strategy does play in key in Spain. Or that's, for example, that's how we saw... Pastor Maldonado, you know, outflank Fernando Alonso in, in 2012 when Pasta won the race. Um, but back to McLaren, I think so the team will do everything they can to, to help him win the race. I see it. He's um, the one of two Spanish drivers on the grid. Obviously, unfortunately for Carlos, yeah, he's probably not going to be chasing a win. It'd be great if Fernando was, and he'll, you know, again, like a bit like Kimi and a bit like Jensen, if, he, if this is going to be his last season in Formula 1 GT, he will want to go out with a bang. Unfortunately, he might not be able to deliver, but I know that he will want to give everything and even a, even a second place will be an improvement but he'll still be kicking himself about that I imagine after the race but uh, I, I really for both McLarens as well I hope they both get into Q3 uh, I hope I say both, both in the points like they were in Russia uh, which was fantastic to see absolutely great you know improvement that they're making so much obviously I know the Honda engine is unreliable but especially after from last season and it you know it's it made improvements this season but it's not going to be on top I, I really hope that they do a solid performance both McLaren's because I'm really I really want to see him do especially in the European season 
Well, I want to see them do well. I think. Um, I mean, obviously, obviously, Fernando Alonso, as I said before, won this race twice. Yeah. Um, I think once. I think it was, his first win was in 2006, I believe. Yeah. And the second win was in 2013, which I which I believe was probably more famous in 2013. Yeah. I don't know why, because uh, obviously having his first win after coming off to winning win one championship, going for another one. Um, his, his first Spanish driver to win it to win his one race, which was obviously absolutely a massive, massive achievement. And um, coming in a Ferrari in the um, obviously 2010, 2013, he hadn't won a race in a while, and he, he finally wins in a, in a legendary car, and he, he did it so well. And um, obviously after being very, very close to winning the championship last season, uh, they had a bit of a poor car in 2012. Bearing in mind that nearly won the Fernando Alonso nearly won the championship, but it wasn't as as quick as what uh, people would have thought. Would yeah. Have been. Uh, 2013 had a much better car. Fernando Alonso comes in, domin- dominates the race, uh, win- wins it in his own crowd. He's, he's very, very emotional. Obviously, holds up the Spanish flag, um, and uh, obviously, unfortunately, that was la- that was his last win in Formula One. Yeah. And um, obviously, whether obviously he won't win this weekend, um, and whether whether he win stay in Formula One long enough to win another one, I don't know. But I would like to see him win yeah. one more. Just yeah, to say, yeah. right, that, that's me. That's me gone as well. But um, speaking of very, very, very famous ones, we've, we've seen our fair share. Of uh, famous moments, uh, especially in our debut season in 1991, yep. where we've seen obviously a very famous scene where you've got Nigel Mansell uh, and Senna co- gunning down uh, the street, coming, coming to the one, you know, sparks everywhere. You can see the aerodynamic and the wind flow on the rear wings. Very, very close racing. Absolutely fantastic. What that race won by uh, Nigel Mansell. Um, and obviously, probably more recently, most famous was in 2012, where Pastor Maldonado, the, the, the legendary driver himself, <laughs> won. Yeah. Uh, in Williams, which you know, I didn't really have the pace to. No, it wasn't um, great, no. Actually, win. and I believe I, at this moment I'm thinking, you know, right, here comes a driver that uh, that has the potential to do well in Formula One. Yeah. Because beforehand, Williams and Williams were just poor in reliability. They had the pace. Yeah. Uh, if you remember him um, in, in Australia when uh, the last lap he, he spun, crashed out, missed yeah, out yeah. four points, Malaysia, DNF, and so he's had a massive bundle. Very, very unlucky. Yeah, Comes yeah. in, dominates the race, keeps the handle on for a bit, mm-hmm. wins the race famously, um, and obviously famously lifted on, on the podium. But I think it was by Fernando Alonso and Kimi Wright, I believe, at, at Lotus at the time. I think, yeah, well, yeah, it was yeah. definitely a Lotus driver, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, probably, probably uh, Kimi Wright, probably Grosjean, probably in the bushes somewhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think a very famous one. Obviously, that's where we've seen uh, Michael Schumacher uh, lose his final. Possibly his final pole position in Formula One because that's when he went in the back of Bruce. He Senna. did, he did. That because, was of course, such a shame. Which gave him a bit of the Grand Prix. Yeah. So that, again, that was a bit of a weird thing. So the Spanish Grand Prix has thrown up a lot of different um, winners as well in the past because um, I think nine drivers in the last nine races have, yep. have all been different, different drivers. Nine different drivers in the past nine seasons. So yep. um, I, I believe, I think, probably like if Max Verstappen were to win or Daniel Ricciardo were to win, you know, make a ten out of ten. Yeah. You know, what I mean, that that would be incredible. If Max could win this year, this race, I mean, that would that would be amazing. That would be, be incredible. I might cry. I will. I will. I will. I'll, like, I'll be like. That was. That that's my that's my life over because I'm stuck here and he's in Spain winning the Grand Prix. So the next thing I want to move on to, next thing I want to move on to, JT, is telling you about the tire choices. Now, as I mentioned oh, yeah. beforehand. Obviously, Spain is incredibly hard on the tyres. Now, um, in terms of experience, both from drivers and the teams and also the tyres, I remember they had pre-season testing there um, at the start of the year. This year, they had solely in Catalonia, obviously no uh, no Jerez or, or Bahrain, but but still, I mean, the track still shows up more. And also, as well, it was something like, you know, five degrees average uh, Celsius, I mean, you know, in terms of the t- track temperature. Obviously, this week is expecting, I think it's mid-30s, very hot, obviously you'd expect from Spain in the uh, middle of May. So let's give you the tyre choices a rundown. Now the, the three tyre compounds that are being brought by Pirelli are the orange marked hard tyres, the white marked medium tyres and the yellow marked soft tyres. Uh, and just going on obviously as I mentioned the, t- uh, the, the drivers get to choose what tyres that they use. Now all of the drivers all the way down have chosen at least one set of the hard tyres. Uh, the drivers that we have um, that have selected two are well, on here, it's uh, Ricardo and Fiat. Now, that's probably a two Red Bull. That was probably done as a, a Red Bull decision, but uh, yeah. we'll never know. Uh, the two uh, Force Indies of Nico Hulkenberg and Sergio Perez. Uh, Kevin Magnussen, the sole driver uh, at Renault, who's chosen two with Julian Palmer with one. 
Uh, Carlos Sainz at Toro Rosso, obviously along with Daniel Fiat with two. So both of them, the, the current Toro Rosso drivers with two. Uh, Marcus Ericsson and Felipe Matas, so both Saubers with two. Pascal Verlein and Rio Harianto, the two Manor drivers with two choices. And Roman Grosjean, again, the sole driver at Haas with two, with Esteban with one. Now, again, they've all chosen uh, like four to five mid set uh, sets of the white medium tyres, with the most with Max Verstappen, the new Red Bull driver with six set of medium tyres. And again, yep. to round it off, so between six and eight sets of the yellow marked soft tyre. Now, in terms of what we'll see in the race, now, it'll, and obviously all three of those will make their appearances. Now, depending on what the track temperature is, we'll see for the, for the option tyre. We'll maybe say the yellow marked soft tyre. Obviously, as we say, we have no medium, we have no super soft tyre. I don't know why I said medium. We have no super soft tyre. And also, more famously, we have, uh, remember, guys, we have the introduction of the ultra soft tyre, the purple marks in um, Canada, in Montreal, which is not next race, the race after. So, that'll be amazing. I also remember um, at the start of the year, there was two introductions of things that everyone was excited about. The qualifying system, which by the way is gone, um, thank you. and uh, thank you, um, and then the ultra soft tyres. So that will make its debut, which we're very excited about. But this race, it's very hard on the tyres. And as I said to JT at uh, the start of the video, strategy is key. That is one of the reasons why Pastor won his race, and Williams got a tip top in 2012. And yeah, that's another reason why I said McLaren might be on top. You know, if they get the the strategy right. Because in terms of in terms of raw speed to strategy and, 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 and tire saving and things like that, it definitely I'd say it more favours in terms of you know the skills. It definitely favours more the, the tire saving and, and the strategies. Big play, um yeah, so it'll be fantastic to see who gets it right. It's really who gets who gets the strategy right this week and GT. And that's what I'm really excited to see. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean obviously tires are tire strategy and that are always key and obviously as you were saying about the, the the teams choosing the harder tyres, which obviously would be the slower teams, trying to like go for a, a possibly, I think it's a two-stop, but yeah. they will try and go for it in Spain. Yeah. And obviously the fast teams will probably go for a three-stop. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll only see that the hard tyre the hard tyre appear in um, uh, where, sorry, the race. And obviously, well, yeah, the, the race. Yeah. Whereas obviously practice in, in qualifying, we'll see like the, the, the white and yeah. the soft. Yeah, very much the option, the, the sprint tyre, yeah. Yeah, yeah obviously just trying to get a learn track of the tyres. Uh, as you were saying before, because obviously when the, when the test there, uh, which happened in the past you know, many, many, many years in Catalonia, the, the track temperature is just not hot enough yeah. to actually like look at the tyres and go, right, how they're going to react in this. Yeah. So, I mean, going, going to Catalonia, yes, you're learning the car, but in terms of the tyres, they're not, really, not going to know how they're going to react. Yeah. Because as you were saying, about 30, 30 degrees um, in the air temperature, obviously, it'll be, it'll be even hot on the track. So we don't know how the, how the tyres are going to wear, how quickly they're going to wear, because obviously it's a different compound this year. Um, and obviously how, how they react, because there are some circuits where the medium reacts better than the softs, which you obviously would expect the softs to go faster, but some tracks is faster on medium, depending on how hot it is. So okay, that, could, that could be one of them circuits yeah. um, in Catalonia. And obviously, with the heat, obviously time, time will tell. And obviously uh, a driver like Max Verstappen, who is very good on, uh, who is good on the tyres, um, and obviously we'll, we'll see, we'll see how, how that favours and how it favours other teams as well, especially the, the back team who, who did choose two sets of, of, the, of the hard tyres. So yeah. maybe it will be interesting to see what, what teams go with there this weekend. So the final question, JT, and the most important. By the way, guys, we'll put our predictions on the page uh, very soon. But yes. uh, most important question, who's going to win? Oh, there's only one man that can win it, isn't it, Rosberg, at the moment? Um, I would... I'll be daft not to say. Yeah, um, yeah. You, Rosberg. Um, a second, second then. Second. That's that. Now that is the million dollar question, isn't it? Normally it would be like, well, first race for the million dollar question. Second yeah. place is the million dollar question because how reliability is poor? Better oh, reliability is poor. They're the drivers you expect. So I'm gonna go with Hamilton in second and third place. And literally, it could be anybody. It, it, it could be Ricardo, Kimi, Massa. Uh, yeah. No. Um, oh, let's see. I'm gonna play safe and go with that. I'll see that. Do you know what, JT? That's, that's I'm gonna obviously Rosberg has to win. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah is it? Second place. I'm gonna go for. Um, I'm gonna go Hamilton again. I mean, I know he's not winning because that's Rosberg, but he is pulling out some unbelievable comebacks. In China, he had his. He he started at the back of the grid behind Pascal Verlaine. Or maybe in front. Oh well, next to Pascal Verlaine at the back, 
and then finished seventh place in the race. He's had some, and also tenth place. It came from tenth place to second at the uh, Russian Grand Prix. So he's done some fantastic comeback. Obviously, second for this. Even if, even if like 2012 JT, he, he gets excluded to the back of the grid, which again probably helped Pasta. But um, whatever happens to Lewis, this the, in 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 a uh, quali, I reckon he'll come second in the race. And also, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go out on a limb. Even more so, JT, and I'm gonna say Verstappen third. I I just have. I, an, I, I really do. I really hope I'm right. Uh, I hope that will be great. He, if he does that, I mean, I say his. He, basically, if he does this, JT, you always, we always talk about Max might will, will most definitely become Formula One world champion. If he does it this year, sorry, if he does it in this race, if he comes third in this race, even a third place, that's it. He's he's won the world championship one year. By the way, guys, just as a start, he's got five years. He's got five, so he's got this season and then four more seasons to win the world championship to become the youngest. So the youngest at the moment is Sebastian Vettel, 23 years old, and I don't know, some month. But I've number crunched and I found out that because of Max's age, he has another five, he has this season and another four seasons to win the world championship. And he can lift it at the very last race and he will become the youngest world champion. Five seasons, JT. He's got that long to, to become the youngest yeah. world champion. I reckon he'll do it less. I believe he'll do it less. Given the right car, he'll do it, he'll do it less. Could he it, could um, do it next year? Possibly. I mean, obviously, the move, the, the move to Red Bull is, do, is done for next yeah. season. Definitely, it's, it's sealed. But unless, uh, unless he wasn't approved. But I believe that the, the deal is done. Uh, obviously, he'll partner, partner Ricardo next season. Where, where, where Danny Kivat will be, I really don't know. He might, he might even jump Red Bull as a, as, a, as a test driver. Could do, uh, yeah. Depending on how he delivers, which yeah. would be like very, very annoying. But, um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, as you were saying, if he wants to do, get, I mean, get third um, on, the, on the podium uh, this weekend, I wouldn't necessarily count your chickens early <laughs> uh, with, with this kid, obviously. I don't know why you had chickens, I don't know. Because <laughs> um, obviously, I mean, if you look at Haas, they had a fantastic start of the season. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Very, very, you know, impressive. People were like, right, this, this team's going to be the next big thing. Well, my goal, John, it's going, to, it's going to win some races. Now they've got a bit quiet. They scored some points last race. Yeah. But, I mean, obviously not as good and not as good performing as what they had been at the start of the season. So I, I, I believe if Max Verstappen were to get on the podium, people would jump immediately to the conclusion he's going to be world champion uh, this season. He's yeah. going to win the next. He's going to win every single race from now to the end of the season. Because that's what pundits do, that's what medias do. Mm. When you be realistic about this, when you be honest, that if Max Verstappen does get on the podium, Let's be calm up until the end of the season. Mm, I don't know. Because it shows a lot, though. It shows promising. Of, of, of course, it shows yeah. that you know, he has the ability. But then, I mean, he's still young at the end of the day, which showed because um, if you remember last season, at the start of the season, uh, we were like, well, this kid's good. And, you know, obviously, everyone was criticising him of his age, but you know, right, he's young enough, he's all right. And obviously, Max Stappen is, is on the high. Then he came crashing back down to earth at the Monaco Grand Prix. Where um, he tried, I think it was Roman Grosjean, and he tried to like, overtake him, hit the back of him, straight in the barrier, and that's pretty much when Max Verstappen went, right, you know, you can crash in Formula 1. Yeah, you can. yeah. You, the, the, uh, you know, it is, it is still kind of dangerous, yeah, know obviously. Yeah, you know, obviously, proven. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and obviously, you, we, we don't want to get the, the, the excitement to Max Verstappen's head, and obviously, and obviously I, I want him to do well, I want him to succeed, but I believe that if he, if he does well this race, Let's not jump the conclusion because there's every single chance that he might do badly in the next few races. Yeah. That everyone will be criticising him, like, oh, he's not the kid that we expect. He's not the future world champion. Yeah. And and it's like, let, give him to the, give him to the end of the season, unless he's, unless he unless he wins like the next, like obviously the next few races, gets the point in the next few, like loads of races. Yeah. Like, but let's wait to the end of the season. Let's see how he does. Let's see where he finishes. Um, I, I believe he finished. I think his, his highest was 12th last year. I think yeah. 12th, I believe. Uh, he, he didn't finish higher than that at Red Bull. But, yeah. You know, let's be realistic. Let's wait to the end of the season. Let's see how he does. Yeah. And then we'll never start judging, yeah, judging yeah. him from there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but he's got all to play for this year. And there's one word. There's one word, JT, that I think's been chucked around. That the one word that's been proven. Pressure. Every driver's feeling it. Rosberg's feeling the pressure of going after eight. Hamilton's feeling the pressure of not scoring and the teammates running away. People are catching yeah. him. He hasn't won yet. And Max. Is feeling the pressure of he has to perform now. He, I wonder what's going on in the matter of mind, but you know what I think that he's feeling is that he, he he's, he's got. I'm sure he's very calm, as you said, JT, when you talk about the interviews. He comes across very nice, very mature, very calm under pressure. But um, 
I think he has all to prove and he'll need to go out and he'll think to himself that what about if like Kvyat outscores us in terms of points or what about if I get outside the points and then all this all this talk all this bigging up all this this people you know bigging us up over the, the last few weeks and, and then the move you know kicking Daniel out for me is all gone out the window because I've, I've done terrible in this race so it's it's got all to play for Max he has to perform yeah, yeah we'll catch it this weekend guys catch it this match oh it'll be not miss it but most importantly don't miss our review of the Grand Prix to see what my opinion says. Yes. Um, opinions were of the race. Don't, don't, yes. Don't, don't no. miss that. Don't you... That's a vital the weekend. Sunday night, guys. Uh, make sure you catch it. And make sure you catch the, the thrilling weekend. Obviously, if you live in Europe, it's good because it's it's now like more sensible times compared to Australia when you know you have to get up at like 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, depending on, on where you live. So that's it for the uh, preview, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, on the channel this week, on tomorrow, we have F1 Decode episode 4, which is Nigel Mansell v Damon Hill, the Battle of the Brits. Uh, so make sure you catch that. And also, well, make sure you catch all the other F1 Decode videos we have made. And then Sunday, we have the uh, the review to a thrilling race, or what we think is going to be a thrilling race in Spain, um, which will be absolutely fantastic. F1 Debate to episode 12 coming out next week, along with F1 Decode episode 5, which is the battle of the Brazilians, Nelson Piquet and Emerson Fittipaldi. So thank you very much for watching this episode, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. See you later, guys. Take care. Bye.